Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's fourth and final video. We're going to have a look at whether for the next 10 to 14 days for today's final video, day 10 will take us to be 4th of July and we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the extra GFS and ECM ensembles. Maybe in a couple of weeks, we'll have a look at the CFS V2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. Gets into the second half of July. I shall get on with that for you in a moment. Just say that first. The video I say was our 6 a.m. UK weather forecast. We've also released a weekend forecast and the first seasonal model roundup for autumn 2023. We get 15 one five long range models together from the world's leading forecast centres. See what they're all showing for the autumn for the first time uh, this season. So if you would like to check that one out, please like, share, subscribe on all our videos. Thank you so much for doing that. We need to put on around 25 subscribers now, that's all, to get ourselves to 16.4k. Uh, so if you could give us a sub, that'd be absolutely fantastic. Tell your friends and thank you subscribe and let's push up to 16.4k. Thanks so much, everybody. Right, before we get on with 1040 there, we're actually going to do a little mini storm watch, if that's all right with everyone. So I'm not going to have time uh, this evening to do uh, a, a storm watch. So I want to include some uh, data about the chance of all tomorrow tomorrow uh, in, uh, in this 1014 day. So this is the fact sheet from the uh, UK Met Office. This is the human interpretation of the forecasters by the UK Met. We've got a ridge of high pressures built up from the south again. Um, today, across southern areas, that's brought a lot of warmth and uh, humidity with it. We've got lots of cold fronts out in the Atlantic with this area of low pressure. Those cold fronts will be heading our way through the course of tomorrow. So let's go 24 hours on. In comes the first cold front, and then there's a second cold front hot on its heels at 6 a.m., pushing in from it. Actually, that could bring heavy, fungy rain into west parts of the country, possibly thunderstorms. And as these fronts move in to the hot and humid air sitting across eastern regions, that's how the trigger could occur for a uh, thunderstorm. So this first one, probably not going to be that active, but could trigger off some scattered storms. This cold front just here is one that could well deliver some uh, pretty big thunderstorms. Looks like it'll be mostly in northern and eastern areas, I think, for these storms tomorrow afternoon. Doubt there's going to be much down in the south, but we'll have a look at the data in a moment. By midnight on Monday, that cold front has swept through. It's in the North Sea. We're in a different uh, air mass then coming in off the Atlantic. And this heralds a quite a significant change for uh, next week to cooler, fresher, and eventually more unsettled conditions as well. You see all of this low pressure out of the Atlantic. There's quite a lot of uh, low pressure all over the place. We've got low pressures here, low pressures here, another one there, and then more low pressure around here, all waiting in the wings, and uh, those areas of low pressure will be starting to head our way as we get a return of Westerlies next week. More about that later on in the video. Right, so we're going to start off with the uh, Apeige model, this high-res model from um, Metro France. Um, so, and the weather outlook, of course, good friend Brian. Uh, so we've got the showery burst in the west at midnight. Most areas are dry. It's going to be a very warm and steamy night tonight, actually. Temperatures in some town cities could hold up around 21 degrees, 70 Fahrenheit tonight. Um, that's, in a, that's a scenario at uh, 8 o'clock in the morning. So I think by then, this is likely to be a band of rain, really, rather than thunderstorms. And you see some quite heavy rain by some parts of Scotland is likely as well. Now, into the middle of the day, that front only moves very slowly, but it does start pushing to Scotland, northern England, and down into Wales as well. Notice how the, the precipitation is easing northwards, though, through the afternoon. So it really is like north of Wales and the Midlands that we've got the risk of uh, some really quite wet weather. These uh, green colours just here are, I think, likely to be thunderstorms kicking off on the leading edge of that cold front moving into the warm and, and the humid air. And that's pushing into eastern counties. Some very intense, vibrant colours there. So uh, looking uh, really good for eastern counties, for people in Lincolnshire, Yorkshire, uh, up into, uh, into Northumberland. Um, looks really good there for some uh, thunderstorms, I think, tomorrow. I'll do very little, though, further southwards, you'll notice. And then the whole lot goes out into North Sea through the evening. Then we're into that cooler, fresher air mass. Uh, DWD Icon is looking like this as well. So in comes cold front through tomorrow afternoon. That's a little bit more in the way of precipitation for Wales and the Midlands there. 
compared to our pairs. Nothing much getting down into a sailboat. But but the heavier stuff, and where the thunderstorm risk is, I think, is like particularly the North Midlands, up into Northern England, up into Southern and Eastern parts of Scotland, where we have the most intense of the colours. Again, by, uh, by Sunday night, Monday morning, that wet weather clearing away into the North Sea. And then we've got UKV as well, the high res model from the uh, UK Met Office. All of this coming from the Weather Outlook. Please check out Weather Outlook, um, see this data for yourself. So again, through the early hours of uh, the morning tomorrow, we've got this band of heavy rain, possibly thunderstorms, through Ireland and heading up into western parts of Scotland. And then through the morning, that pushed on to the western side of Scotland, uh, northwest England, and into Wales as well. Notice ahead of that main band, there are some storms beginning to break out midday across northern parts, being possibly down into the north and uh, the northeast Midlands as well. And then through the afternoon, we see those heavy showers and thunderstorms moving through Scotland, through northern England into eastern parts, being maybe a little bit less for like Lincolnshire, Yorkshire, with. Um, UKV compared to, for example, Icon or Arpege. Um, no, that remains to be seen, but it does look as though it's like the northern half of the country that's at the greatest risk of uh, thunderstorms from this particular breakdown. By the time you go into Monday, we're into a different air mass with much sunshine showers in the north, both dry down the south. That heralds the onset of Atlantic westerlies, the return of the westerlies. And then uh, finally, WRF looks like that at midnight again. That's where the heavy precipitation is at that point. As we go through the early hours, we're going to find those storms breaking out through central, northern and western regions. So could be one or two down southwestern England. That might affect Glastonbury. It's the only one really that's going for storms into Glastonbury tomorrow afternoon. That might affect Glastonbury if it comes off. But it's really areas where the north Wales into northern England, northern Ireland and Scotland. No see the risk of those uh, torrential downpours. Um, WRF, does, WRF does actually push some of those storms through the Midlands and even some southern counties. So WRF much more widespread with the thunderstorm risk tomorrow. Interesting. We'll see with tonight's high res models. Um, I won't have to do a video, but if you have a look at tonight's high res models when they've all updated by around 7 p.m. or, or uh, 8 p.m., um, you know, have a look and see whether WRF is onto something there and the other high res begins to get those storms going further south. Looks very good. I have to say, WRF for like the Midlands into eastern England as well and up to northern England and Scotland. Much more widespread with the fungi breakdown with WRF compared to, for example, uh, UKV. It all gets out of the way through uh, tomorrow evening and tomorrow night, leave, leaving us with sunshine and showers on Monday. So, yeah, it could be like the third thundery, or will be for some of us, the third thundery summer, um, Sunday, I should say, the third, the third, the third thundery Sunday, I should have gone off on this tangent, should I? Uh, it's going to be the third thundery Sunday in succession, I think, in some places. So, it'll be interesting to see how it all works out. Good luck if you want a storm, and uh, I hope you get one. Right, OK, that's a mini storm watch done. Let's do a 10 to 14 day. Then starting off with the CT, central temperature, and currently sitting at 16.8, which is 2.7 degrees, 3 degrees above average. That's visual to yesterday, to the 23rd of, uh, of June. I think I'm going to go to 17 degrees by the time it updates on Monday. However, after that, it is likely to drop back, I think, in the closing day. So it'll probably finish up somewhere in the high 16, but it will be interesting to see how that works out. These are the uh, GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. Red line is the first year upper air temperature average for Birmingham. Starting off, of course, hot at the moment. You're going to get a drop in those upper air temperatures by the end of the weekend into next week. Another little push up there early next week. Uh, that's associated with an area of low pressure, though. And then beyond that, just generally close to, or maybe even a little bit below average, with the upper air temperature, I suspect, you know, near normal temperature probably on the surface should be relatively presently warm in the uh, sunshine. But perhaps more significant than temperature is precipitation because uh, there's the thunderstorms coming up uh, potentially tomorrow. But it really is from like the second half of next week onwards. But it does look actually quite wet there. Uh, very significant change after all the dry weather we've had recently. Um, that's a wet ensemble as we go through the first week, 10 days 
of July with a lot of precipitation spikes uh, showing up there. Temperature anomalies from the 24th of June to the 2nd of July, a little bit warmer than average, especially so for England and Wales. Precipitation anomalies from the 24th of June to 2nd of July, average a bit on the wetter than average side, actually, especially for more northern and western regions. Latest wind from that from urbanoldschool.net shows that we've got low pressure in the Atlantic. There's the position of the cold front, and that is on its way for tomorrow. Right, let's start going through chart data then. Miss Abel H. UK Met Euro Run is looking for uh, midnight on Tuesday. So at that point, we find that we're into a westerly flow. And uh, we've got showers in uh, northern and western regions had this area of low pressure. We've got a little, little bit of a ridge of high pressure, a little bit of transient bump building into the south. So through next week, there's a deterioration in the weather pattern. By the end of next week, into next weekend, the low pressure comes uh, moving in from off the Atlantic into uh, the UK and also into Ireland as well, bringing showers, if not longer spells of rain as well. And, of course, the projection is up to east southwards with high pressure pulling out into Atlantic. Cooler air is beginning to move in from the North Atlantic as well. ICOM, once more, has that little transient ridge of high pressure in the south on Tuesday. Low pressure in the north. And also going for a general deterioration of the weather pattern through next week. So by next weekend, uh, this is been day Saturday, 1st of July. We sat under a, a trough, an area of low pressure, which will bring, if it comes off, showers and longer spells of rain and significantly cooler temperatures as well. The GFS midnight run once more showing low pressure heading in from the Atlantic into the northern half of the country through the middle of next week. Meanwhile, in the south, high pressure is trying to cling on, but later next week, even there, the high pressure gets pushed out as this low moves in from the North Atlantic. And that low then sits around the country through the first weekend of July, bringing showers no longer spells of rain. Another quite significant area of low comes up from the south then on uh, day 10, which is the 4th of July. That will bring heavy rain up from the south, quite cool temperatures as well. That low pressure moves off into the North Sea. Um, and then we go into what we call a car, which means we're neither under high pressure nor low pressure. That doesn't last for long. The next low comes in off the Atlantic, bringing further rain by the very end of the GFS midnight run. We're possibly seeing a hint of a ridge of high pressure starting to push in from off the Atlantic, but of course, that's like two weeks away. GFS 6Z, again, showing uh, high pressure. Try to cling on, cling on in the south through the middle of next week, but low pressure dominates in the north. And the second half of next week, then sees low pressure sinking in from the North Atlantic, bringing showers, if not longer, spells of rain. Um, Destiny's Moon samples as well, so it looks pretty cool with that. And, you know, just, just rather unsettled through the first weekend of July and those cool showery conditions carry on up to day 10 as well. Beyond that higher pressure starts ridging in from off the Atlantic as we go to the end of the first week of July so eventually we start setting up a Scandinavian high and get the wind in uh, to the east again albeit not particularly uh, warm with that and there will probably be uh, further shower. But it is an indication that high pressure might come back relatively quickly after this unsettled start to July. If you enjoyed the video, please can you like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much everybody for doing that. Why not drop a comment and uh, let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. And don't forget to tell your friends about Gaz Web about Gaz Web. Thank you so much for doing that. 25 subs are going to get us to uh, for uh, 16.4k so please give us a sub thank you so much everybody for doing that GM again with that ridge of high pressure into the south on Tuesday but it's only ahead of the next area of low pressure it takes over through next week into the first weekend of July low pressure is in the ascendancy it's bringing showers or longer spells of rain with it as well and cooler temperatures and then the ECM rounds it all off again have low pressure coming in from off the Atlantic gradually through uh, next week so by the time we get day 10 the ECM also looks relatively unsettled out of all the model output the ECM probably keeps the ridge going especially for the south the longest but even the ECM is uh, turning relatively unsettled I think as we uh, go through uh, up towards day 10, so day 8, 9, 10. This is my precipitation forecast based on the ECM run from Tometeo.com. There's tomorrow's storms affecting, affecting the northern half of the country. Not that much getting down 
into the south, where it will be a very hot day tomorrow. It could be the hottest day of the year, temperatures up to. We've already reached 32 once. It might be 32 uh, again tomorrow. That's 90 Fahrenheit for some parts of the southeast. Into next week, so further show reverse in the north and west. Lots of dry weather initially in the south and east, but even there, some of this wet weather will push through later on next week. Into the first weekend of July, again, we're looking at showers, if not longer spells of rain. And uh, that continuing up towards day 10. Means there'll be options on the table within the ECM ensembles today for day 10. Gets us to the 4th of July. 12 members of the ECM ensembles, you know, ensembles including the control and the operational run with low pressure into the northwest Europe. That looks unsettled and quite cool. 11 with high pressure sinking in from the Atlantic into West Europe. That looks very unsettled too. 10 with low pressure to the north, a little bit of higher pressure to the south, so that could bring something a bit drier to the south, but basically it's still quite unsettled and Atlantic driven. Nine with low pressure over and to the north and northeast, country that looks cool and unsettled. Six with low pressure again across the north and west of Europe, and three a minority option bringing high pressure back. So three members of the East Shore Sons bring back high pressure, otherwise the rest of them are basically unsettled and low pressure dominated at uh, day 10. In too many time, we do see signs of a change though perhaps. Um, now this gets us to the 9th of July, 15 members of the ECM ensembles taking that high that low pressure away to Scandinavia and building high pressure out to our west. That will be turning drier but of course could be a little bit on the cool side. 11 with high pressure right over the top of the country and should be bringing up a warmer southerly southwesterly flow too. Uh, uh, 9 again with uh, or 9 uh, with low, uh, high pressure west low pressure to the east. Winds again coming in from a northerly direction, so that's quite cool, uh, but maybe getting a bit drier from the west. Uh, another nine down here with low pressure just sitting over the country, that's still very unsettled. And then seven with high pressure over to the east country, low pressure down towards Biscay. That's probably the warmest, so that could be quite hot, actually, but of course this low could be a trigger for thunder. So we might start seeing a transition towards higher pressure by the end of the first week of July. This unsettled start to July could be relatively uh, short-lived, but we've got to wait and see a bit longer on that. Uh, 500 mm bar height annoyance from the CFSB2 finally. So this is week one, taking us from 24 uh, to the 30th of June. Low pressure is to the north. Change the colour. High pressure is going to be to the south. And winds are coming in from a westerly direction with that. Week two will be the 1st to the 7th of July. Top of low pressure to our north. Northeast, high pressure out in the Atlantic, and it looks rather cool and showery as well with winds in from a northwesterly direction. But we three shows a change. It's the 8th to the 14th of July. High pressure begin to ridge from the Atlantic into northern Europe. That, that would be starting to settle things down and maybe warm things up. And then week four looks interesting. It's the 15th, 21st of July. This is around the period where we have 40 degrees last summer, of course, so uh, it could. You know, it does have potential, we know, to be hot. And uh, we find that high pressure drifting eastwards with low pressure out to the west. That would, of course, bring the wind up from the south. So that would bring hot air up from the south. The low pressure in the Atlantic, of course, could bring trigger for thunderstorms. But uh, certainly there, the middle of July, shaping up to be quite hot on that particular CFS rubber. It's four weeks away, so very long way out. Okay, we're done. If you enjoyed the video, please do you like, share, subscribe, make sure you everybody to do that. Drop a comment, let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. And don't forget to tell your friends about Gals Worth It. So we thank you so much, everybody, um, for doing that for us. Okay, so I'm just going to tell you what's coming up uh, tomorrow. We're going to have the uh, 6M UK weather forecast. We've got the third autumn update on the way for you tomorrow as well. And Gals Worth It's Sunday Roundup returns. Return of the Sunday Roundup. Uh, tomorrow afternoon. So, uh, been a while since we've done a Sunday roundup. We've got one for you, though, coming up tomorrow. Looking at being light seas over temperature. There's a lot of interest about that at the moment, of course. Um, solar activity, uh, QBO, NEO, AO, and weather next week, 10 days and beyond. It's going to be epic. That'll be coming up tomorrow afternoon. You have a fantastic rest of your Saturday. And uh, for this one, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.